What's going on, everybody? I'm Tyler, and there is no perfect movie. And this was supposed to be a video review of Cry Macho, the latest Clint Eastwood movie that I was looking forward to checking out on opening day because I figured, like most people, it was going to be Unforgiven meets Gran Torino. And it absolutely was, both in a good and negative case. The good side being that Clint knows how to make it still feel entertaining, even though the downside is... You've seen him do this exact same shit over and over again, and the element of surprise is just... It's completely gone. In fact, there are num numerous homages recently that have been done a hell of a lot better with the exact same story structure, like Logan, interestingly enough. So I'll have more thoughts on that eventually, and I'm probably going to see it a second time just to make sure that my initial thoughts that are saying it's good but not great, I'm going to make sure that it's still there, but... I may have sat down with one of the worst movie crowds I've ever sat through in my entire life. And I knew going in that the majority of the audience members were going to be pretty much, if not, looking exactly like Clint Eastwood's age range. And, you know, I can't say it's... I can't say I blame them. I mean... Eh, where do I fucking start with this? So, anyways, I walk into the theater, and I'm already a little bit worried when the people sitting next to me, two to three seats to my side, are uh, an old married couple, and someone who I'm assuming was their son, given the way they spoke to each other, and the lady... I give her credit, she's a nice, well-intended woman who did say hi and asked me if I was a big Clint Eastwood movie, and I said very much so, and she's just like... This may be his last film given she may have been like 30 years younger than him if I had to guess, which I find hilarious that even she went to that assumption. I just sat there and went, eh, I wouldn't be surprised. And so, yeah, already I was worried there. She kind of reminded me of the lady I sat next to in Get Out. If you ever seen my Get Out review, you know that I talked about a single mom bringing her 8 and 10 year old to Get Out. And going, yes, every time the villains died, which you took them, you took kids to a hard R movie with N-words, Jeffrey Dahmer jokes, the list goes on on that. It still blows my mind to this day that that even fucking happened. But in any case, I got even more worried when I had to go to the bathroom and had to walk past this other elderly couple that sat down and they were, I don't know why they even brought it up, but they were just like, Oh, just so you know, we'll actually be moving to our actual seats, but these lights under here, it's like sitting under a heat lamp in a kitchen, and that's bullshit. I don't care how old you are, that's not even remotely true, but I thought they were just rambling for the sake of being noticed, and I just sat there and went, okay, whatever. But... So yeah, um, and then the trailers played, and no surprise, everybody talked over them, even though... Funny thing, like, if you're going to get invested in a trailer, yes, you can watch it at home on your laptop and you could more than likely get the same effect, but here's the thing. When you're seeing a trailer on a huge-ass screen in pitch black, the sound, the imagery hits you a hell of a lot harder. Wouldn't you want to hear it and see it in a bigger place as opposed to on your fucking phone? And wouldn't you want everyone else around you to see and hear the exact same exciting shit that you had before? Like... When the Many Saints in Newark trailer popped up, and I'm super looking forward to that as a Sopranos fan. You think everyone wants to be talking over these characters that we've never seen before, like Chrissy's dad and grandpa? Like, seriously. Who are great actors, too. But, yeah, and I didn't think it was going to get any better, considering, for whatever reason, the theater that I went to, Cineplex, they don't put up the don't be a... Tommy Texter or Sea Kicker or Talker, let everyone enjoy the show. They no doubt replace those ads with the fucking COVID advisory logos that we see in every fucking building. So seriously, I why is that even a mandate? If they're on literally every building, on every door and window before you walk in, how fucking stupid do you think people are? This is more about the government than the theater chains because you know theater chains are just doing what they're told i don't blame them for any of the rules that i don't agree with but that's that's another conversation in and of itself one that i'm 
not sure if I'd even want to get into, but it did bug me that there wasn't an advisory saying, please turn off your phones, please stop talking, because sure enough, that's exactly what they did for the entire movie. Anyone who was above my age range, because there were three guys who were probably one or two years older than me that sat in front of me, didn't hear a fucking peep out of them. Which is insane, because usually the adults older than us are the most polite and well-behaved. I mean, they fucking taught us to be polite and well-behaved. It'd be great to see them take their own advice, but... I've ranted about this shit numerous times before, and I don't know why I got up and just asked them, excuse me, could you please stop talking? I came here to listen and watch him, not listen to your audio commentary. If I wanted audio commentary, I would have stayed home and, well, I wouldn't have been able to watch it on HBO Max because I'm Canadian. I don't have HBO Max. A part of me thinks that I didn't get up and say, excuse me, could you please stop talking, is because every time... I vent these frustrations out to people in everyday life. Sometimes people agree with me, but when they don't, they look at me like I'm being needy and selfish, like I own the fucking theater. One person did actually tell me, you go to the movies to enjoy yourself with other people, that's their way of enjoying it. If you're talking over the loud sound speakers, if audience members can hear them and the movie at the exact same time, making it incredibly hard to concentrate, when you're looking over at them, shining their phone in your face, not even paying attention to the fucking movie, because I got news for you guys. People don't make movies to put in the theaters just so you could stare at the other screen. You have any idea how disrespectful it is even when they're not in the theater? Because, like I've said before in some of my festival videos, people will do it at the festivals even if the celebrities are there. They're that fucking selfish. But that's the problem. It is selfish. I don't fucking care if they're enjoying themselves, because they're making it harder for everyone else to. Maybe I didn't say anything just because I don't like being rude to people. It didn't... I'm ashamed to admit that throughout the majority of the thing, I every time someone chirped louder than they needed to, I did just say, fucking shut up already. And judging by some of the reactions I got once I left the theater, because that lady who approached me before, as I was walking out of the bathroom and she was walking out of the theater, she pointed at me and said, Oh, did you like it? And I just sat there, I'm like, You loudmouth prick, you didn't hear a single fucking thing, even though you're only two seats away from me, because the distancing rule in movie theaters really doesn't make any sense to me, in all honesty. Every theater chain does it differently, and at the festival... I struggle to even call it distancing because at TIFF, they divide people up by like one seat each. And because we can't take our coverings off, I guess that's supposed to make it okay. I call bullshit on that because the close calls I've had were among people who were covered and were still sick and still transmitted it anyways. And again, that's another conversation in and of itself that nobody's having. But... um I'm not sure what the message of this video was supposed to be other than for feeder chains to actually fucking put up a sign that says don't talk, don't put your phone, don't put your like phone on display the entire time. That's not the screen you came you paid to look at. You paid to look at and listen to the people on the screen, not the audience and the people on the screen. This isn't a fucking concert. It's completely different. I wouldn't have asked for a refund or anything. I wouldn't have walked out because movie theaters are struggling more than they ever have. Mostly because, again, the people making the rules really don't know shit about movie theaters unless they're the ones who rented it out for a private event of theirs. Fucking idiots. So that part would definitely help. And plus, if they don't follow the rules, you can kick them out and not give them their money back. That is... It's a private establishment. You can make your own rules and do whatever the fuck you want. It doesn't matter if they're going to tweet or Facebook, oh, I, they wouldn't let me talk and use my phone. Yeah, that's because you're a fucking adult and it, that part shouldn't be spelled out to you. And fucking show up on time too. Like four or five people were late and were 
talking as loud as I'm talking to you right now, trying to find their seats. And I just sat there and went, this is your own damn fault, you idiots. You hear that? It's called silence. And I'm not trying to point fingers or name names in any of these videos about some of the people who disagree with me on how I feel about these. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to make it as abundantly clear as possible that there are rules and there are rules for a reason so that everyone can enjoy it. There's no effort in just keeping your mouth shut and watching the movie unless the movie sucks. Other than that, you got absolutely no defense whatsoever. And a part of me also thinks that I didn't, like, challenge them in any way because since they're all over 50 or 60, I guess they think they are entitled to uh, voice their opinions whenever they want to, which, uh, I got news for you, that's never been the case. So, in any case, um, thank you guys for, uh, sitting through this rant for whatever reason, it kind of sort of felt therapeutic, not gonna lie, and it gives me a little bit more confidence that I can gather my thoughts more often in these videos. I've done videos about rants on annoying moviegoers before, so uh, I'll put a link in the description below about that one. You'll get a better idea of what I'm talking about in some scenarios. If you have any uh, moments of yours where you want to scream or actually did scream at someone for not following the rules, let me know in the comments below what some of your least favorite movie-going experiences were. Because I gotta be honest, the worst movie I ever saw, which was at TIFF, for whatever reason made me less angry. It's insane. So, in any case, let me know your thoughts down below. Be sure to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for more reviews. Take care.